Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. I'm just going to hang around for a minute just to see if anyone else wants to join. So today's live is going to be making the Minky Kim uh, flying geese basket. Uh, this comes in a combination pattern of three different sizes. Uh, you get a small, medium and a large. I have made the medium and the large so far. Today's tutorial is going to be for the medium basket because it is the same as the tutorial for the large basket. The small basket is slightly different but the pattern instructions do talk you through that. This just gives you an idea of how to actually create the flying geese for the centre on the foam because you basically quilt as you go with them. Good morning Lorraine. It's actually afternoon now isn't it? Good afternoon. Um, so basically the quilt, I do it slightly differently to the way that the pattern tells you to. I find it slightly easier. Um, the way that I insert the lining as well is actually the way that they insert, it is the way that Minky Kim inserts the lining on a different pattern of hers which is the um, nesting baskets pattern which she has which is also really really nice. Um, I will link after the video, um, I think I might have actually put it in the description box already for where you can download the pattern if you want to make these. Um, apologies, there's horses going by. Hi Janet, lovely to see you here. Um, so this pattern is, uh, I've only got it printed in black and white, so this is the Flying Geese Basket Trio. We are making this size, um, it comes in a large, medium and a small. As I say, I've made these two. I haven't yet made a small one because I don't really have a use for it. I can show you the size of the medium finished, um, which is this size. So it holds my Aurifil large spools. Um, this one was made from Tiny Bee scraps. Um, they're really, really good. They stand up really nicely by themselves. Um, and I will just now quickly talk you through how to do it. So I have you basically, to make this, you cut two, hi Eddie, you cut two pieces of foam. I won't be giving away any of the sizes or the measurements because that is the pattern, the point of the pattern. Um, so you basically, you cut two pieces of foam, one for each side. You mark the central line and you mark two lines either side of that. Um, you then use this to centralise and to line up your triangles to make a flying geese. Once that panel is finished, it will look like this. Morning Stephanie. Um, and once you have finished this, you will then trim the excess overhang down. So as you can see, it is a quilt as you go pattern. Um, so you quilt directly onto the foam. Um, this then creates your side panels, which then become the sides of your basket once they are sort of turned into an oval. So to start with, you need to select your fabrics, cut them down. I cut down some five inch squares that I had of some um, some K facet that I had that was kindly gifted to me by a friend of mine. Um, the point of the three lines on the foam is so that you can line up your triangles on here. So I have just got random pieces of cave cut here. I cut mine slightly bigger than the pattern requires because it's easier to just have a little bit more overhang, but you use a um, a scant quarter inch for these so that you don't over... Oh, to be honest, I've done it a couple of times and I have cut off some of the points when you put the side panels on. Um, it is kind of tricky, but you can, it does, it does work and it's a really good pattern. Um, so what you do is you line up your first triangle um, you centralise it between those three markings. Uh, you then take a contrast one, which I'm just going to pick up the next one, and you centre the, you centre that over the line, and you're going to stitch a quarter in, uh, a scant quarter inch here and then that will flip back and then you do the other side and we're just going to continue doing that the whole way up until we get to the end. So I'm just going to quickly get a couple of the, I'll get this first one done and I'll show you what it looks like folding back. So that is the first one on, you then fold it back 
like so. Pick up your next triangle, line up with that edge. It doesn't really matter where this point, if you cut them bigger, if you cut them bigger, it doesn't actually matter if that goes over because as long as you stitch evenly when it flips back you're still going to get an even flying geese flying goose so let me do that one and then i'll show you how to put the next bit on if you can hear of any grunting or anything like that that is luna because she is asleep right i need to take that down a bit actually so I'm going to centralise my needle with the centre and then I'm going to run my needle from, let me see, I'm going to blue it all down a bit so you can actually see what I'm going on about. So I've got my needle centralised with that centre line and then I'm going to run my needle along the outside to make sure that I'm cutting from one line to the next basically. So a bit like using diagonal seam tape, you're drawing, you're basically creating a line from that centre mark to the outside line. So when you take it off, hi Babs, you will then end up with your flying goose, flying geese. So for your next piece, you take one of the other triangles and you line it up above the point upside down like so so when you flip it up it will then take on that angle to then put your other side ones on so let me stitch that one on and then i can show you what i mean by that <laughs> So that is the next one stitched on. So then when you fold it up, it then creates your first flying geese, flying goose, flying geese, however you want to say it. And then you need to then start working on the triangles that flip to create the next piece. So I am going to whiz through this and get this second panel done. And then I will show you how to put on the side panels and how to actually construct the basket. So we're going to go on there to there stitch from that centre point, down to the other centre point, and flip that back, next one on there, stitch from that centre point of that outer edge into the centre point, So the only thing with this foam is the feed dog seems to like catch it. So that is the second flying geese. So I'm going to move on and just keep going, hammering way through just to get the second side panel done and then I will show you how to do the next part of this. <laughs> take a lot more time than I am and make it a lot more neat and professional. But this is just for display purposes as they say. Just, that one on there. just make sure that when you're putting your next one on each time that the point of your one that you're going to flip up to become the centre of the flying goose matches up with the point of the previous ones so just centralize the point because it makes it much neater so that then when you flip it back the point matches up with the center mark or thereabouts anyway it just depends how precise you want to be really but it's a really fun way of creating flying geese because you've got the stability of the foam stabiliser underneath it. And it kind of, the good thing about foam as well is that it kind of, once you fold the fabric back, because it's got textured finish on it. Hi Marie! It holds the fabric back for you, so it's almost like basting spray. 
You can do, I, I wouldn't, I'm not sure because I haven't tried. I'm not sure that fusible fleece would hold up the same. I don't think it would be stable enough. I mean, there are projects that I've used fusible fleece for instead, but I'm not sure that this would be one. So it recommends that you can either use soft and stable or pelon, or you can use uh, the V, oh, I can't remember how to pronounce it. It's the V, v line. I think it's actually changed its name now to something different. That's the one that I use because I buy it in 15 metre bolts because I go through so much of it. But these don't use an awful lot, so you could probably use, you could probably, you could easily make probably two of these from half a metre of foam. But when we was on a, um, a live a little while ago, I was talking to Stephanie from Stephanie Stitches and we were saying about how fast the needle cutter is on the semi-industrials. And for that reason alone, if you're a quilter and you do a lot of straight stitching and even if you're a bag maker, these semi-industrials are so, so fast. Not just the actual rate that they stitch at, but everything, even the different things that they do, like the, like the auto thread cutter and stuff like that, it's so much quicker than it is on a, um, a normal domestic. I absolutely love my Benina, don't get me wrong, but the thread cutter on that feels like you're actually waiting for a bus to turn up before it actually cuts the thread. Right. We are getting towards the end of this one. There will always be a slight gap at the end because you trim down these panels before you construct the next part of the actual pattern. But these um these K facet prints just look lovely. Luna is in her um I've had to bring a bed in for her because otherwise she just stands there staring at me. So she is currently sat behind me in her bed licking her very very large oh it is so fast isn't it stephanie i just i love it have you got have you got a 1600p or have you got a genomi hd9 because they're basically the same machine aren't they it's just one was made earlier than the other because i don't think they make 1600 anymore. i've actually got two 1600ps but the other one's a bit dodgy and it needs to go in for a service but it's actually in better condition than this one. So once I get that serviced and it's running, I will um, probably rehome this one I'm using now. How's Luna doing? She's okay, Marie. Um, she's not had any more episodes um, for a week or so. It would be great as a Halloween basket. Um, she's... We're trying to keep her really calm, as much as you can do, as long as you don't wear new slippers because she seems to think that they're anyone's game. Um, yeah, so she hasn't had any more seizures or episodes or anything like that. Um, we are, she's going in for her MRI on Friday, I believe. It's either this Friday or next Friday, I can't quite remember. I need to check my diary. Um, and they will then be able to um yeah i would definitely it's definitely worth using the cave square tools because it, i always find that with the um with the squares you don't really ever i don't really ever want to use them for a quilt because i don't i i don't know whether it's just me or whether anyone else is the same but i don't really like pre-cut 
five inch squares. I think they're a bit pointless. The 10 inch or things like that are really good because like the, the bags that I made on one of my previous lives, you can actually use 10 inch pre-cuts to make those zip bags. But um, I just find five inch squares are a bit neck, but they're really good for when you're cutting them down for some little small pieces like this. Um, so yeah, sorry Marie, she's going in either this Friday or next Friday, she's having an MRI and they're going to take the blood test to see if she's got the um, CECS syndrome that they think that she might have, which I think she has because it's that is supposed to be um, controlled via diet. And since we've taken her off a lot of things, they, um, they've become less frequent. And the things that we've taken her off have been diet based, which is in relation to what they say. Right, so those are all of the flying geese in place. So what you need to do now is line up your side strip panels so that you stitch on that outer, oh, you can, it might help if you can actually see, mightn't it? You need to be able to stitch on that outer line as your, as your stitch line so that then when you fold it back, you basically catch just the edges of those. So I've actually cut mine wider than it needs to be just because it's easier to hold on to. So what you want to do is line it up so that basically when you stitch along that line there, you end up with, when you flip it back, your points on your flying geese will just match that seam, which <clears throat> is easier said than done. Let's put it that way. So let's try and line this up as best as possible. I don't think I'm going to catch it because because I've done it so fast for the video. I don't think I'm going to catch it evenly. But <laughs> we can hope and pray. Right, moment of truth. Have I caught them all? Ah, I've cut off. I've cut off two. I've cut off those two points there, just. But basically, once you've done that one, you want to stitch in the center. So if you fold that back where you can feel the edge of the foam, what you want to do is stitch a line basically down the center there just to hold that back. Um, normally it's about, I think it's about half an inch that I did earlier on the other side so we'll do the same so just try and keep that nice and smooth on there as you go down that line so you get your stitch line down there so it just keeps that <laughs> I, say it, I say it keeps it back but it means that once it's flat it's all stretched out nice and neatly. Um, so I'm just going to do the opposite side and then we will construct the actual basket. To actually shape it. Let's see. line up that to catch the corners ah now see that's better that's what it's supposed to look like so you don't catch and cut off any of the points on the triangles oh good morning mr postman i'm hoping that he's actually got some posts today because we've had royal mail strikes for on and off for the last two weeks and I'm waiting on a whole lot of rubbish that I've ordered that I don't actually need. Um, so yeah, that is a much, much neater seam on there because you can see all of the points of the flying geese. So I'm just gonna quickly 
adjust this so that you can see the see the mess of my sewing room and so that I can have you lined up for while I'm trimming these down. So it's not really gonna work, is that? Let's have a look. There we go. Right, so the side panels are done for both of those. So I'm just gonna quickly flick through the instructions and work out what I need to trim them down to. That is the template for the basket bottom, which we will need in a minute. Um, so we cut them down. Uh, medium basket, medium basket. Draw the quarter nines. Guide using a fabric pen or hair marker to stitch through. Da, 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 da. Do I trim them down to? Trim, 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 trim. Right, okay. So that is that. All right, let's work this out. Move it all out of the way so I don't cut into that accidentally. Let's line that up with the edge. Trim that down. Trim it away. Don't know if you can actually see what I'm doing, probably not. Why is this not working? Come on. There we go. Right, so trimming these side panels down just so they're nice and even. Goodbye, Mr. Postman. Last I actually see you doing some work once. Um, so that is the trim down side panel for one side. Let's do the other. Da -da -da -da. Bin. Hopefully that went in the bin, not the floor, because the floor turns out to be a better bin most days. Does anyone else feel the need that they have to hoover the floor in their sewing room, like, continuously? Because the amount of thread that's on it. I also end up with it all wrapped up in my socks. Right, so, side panel's done. Right, so... I am going to trim off the excess on these because I'm going to insert the line in differently to how it tells you to in the pattern because I prefer the other way of doing it, just because I'm difficult. Let's trim those off, so they're down to the same size now as they should be. So the pattern will tell you to insert the line in in a different way to the way that I'm doing it. Um, I've done it two ways now. This way is so much easier. Um, and this way is also the way that Minky tells you how to do it on one of her other patterns. Um, and I'm kind of confused as to what the purpose of doing it, the way that the pattern tells you to. So, those are the flying geese side panels. So what you need to do now with these is you need to line them up um, and stitch the two good sides together a quarter inch. Um, so let's crack on and do that. Oh, let's stand that up there. Uh, you can probably see enough there anyway. Um, so I'm going to stitch these two on a quarter inch seam each side. Do you remember to back tack at the end of each one because you will... Um, You will be putting the seams under a little bit of pressure in a minute. So that creates, he says, oh brilliant, my bottom's run out. This will be fun, I'll find one. Mm. That might have been out, let's have a look, shall we? Why does my bobbin always run out in the middle of something like this? Right, well, let's chuck that in there. This is the bad thing about the 1600p. The bobbins are minuscule. 
compared to other machines like it. Oh, that's that, that's that, put that on. Oh, sorry, Luna, did that make jump? Let's try that again. This bobbin is no way ever going to last me the time it needs to. So I may need to at some point then. Do another one. Stuck. Oh, who is this? Bear with me two seconds, somebody's knocking at my front door. Wait a sec, Luna. Alright, yeah, that's fine. Good, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's Amazon done. It's one parcel down, two to go. Um, so that creates, apologies, that creates your side, which basically becomes the outside of your basket. Um, we are now going to trace off the pattern piece onto the... So this bottom piece, you can actually quilt. Or you can just trace it off and then stitch a quarter in, uh, an eighth of an inch inside the trace pattern piece. So which is what I'm going to do because it's quicker. Um, so now I just need to find something to actually mark this with. This is what happens when you put everything into the actual cases. Uh, what's going on with the chat? Live chat. Happy Wednesday, Adam, and to all wonderful Adamites in the video fan for a while, my first live stream. Oh, hi. Oh, where are you going out shopping, Marie? Somewhere nice, somewhere with um, sewing machine things, hopefully. Well, this is handy, isn't it? Let's draw purple on purple fabric. Why not? What other colour would you use to draw on purple other than purple? Right, so that is the pattern. You can barely see it traced off. I'm going to have to quickly stitch this because the disappearing ink on these run out so fast they disappear normally before you can even then um, stitch where you've marked. Ooh, that doesn't sound right. Right, so let's stitch all the inside there. So this purple is going to be the outer. You're right there, Lulu. What are you up to, girl? So that is the outer part of that trace off. So I'm just going to trim down all of the excess off that, which gives us the outer. To the basket. Um, we're going to use that template again in a minute to trace off and create the lining. So this now needs to go good sides to good sides. So that is going to be the inner part of the, no, it's going to be the outer, the underneath of the basket. So what we now need to do is just mark on here the halfway marks, which I'm literally just going to do the tiniest snip. I'm not going to do that because it's not going to show up. Because it's foam and it just seems to disintegrate. Oh, for goodness sake. How many marking tools does one human being need to find one that actually works? Right, blue pencil. That works. So fold that in half. Just get the halfway marker. So that will, the, the halfway marks line up with the side seams. Where's my tea? Take my little Art Deco bowl full of um, 
under clips. So what we're going to do is line up that side dot with the side seam on the outer. Do that on both sides to line up the foam and then gradually space the clips the whole way around. This puts the nice and even all the way around to get that lined up. Make sure you get all of the layers of fabric and foam. Either way, if you quilt the bottom of this base foam or not, when you trace around it, stitch around in just inside the trace line because it, it's one less layer of fabric that moves when you're doing this. So it's really handy. Let's have a look. Where's my messages? Where's the chat gone? Hi, Lisa. How you doing? No worries, Babs, I'll see you later. Um, so carry on clipping this around, and then what we're going to do is stitch with the base on the actual bed of the machine, because it's much, much easier. Um, and we are going to draw, stitch the whole way around at a quarter inch. That's what I'm there, because it's not in the way there. So now what I'm going to do is, now that that's in, I'm just going to put that side down and then I'm going to stitch a quarter inch the whole way around the edge and just fold the foam out of the way as you go. It's actually one of the easiest shapes to go around because the curves are so slight. It's not far away. Stitch in a straight line. And just fold the foam out of the way. sewn in so once we flip that out this actually gives us the full outside of our basket so we can push all of those edges out and sort of roll those corners out so that is the base of our basket and those are the sides let's roll those seams a bit seams. As I said earlier, the cafe just seems to work so well. They make the most colourful baskets. Let's just roll all the, squish all that out and flatten all those seams. So that is the outer of the basket. Um, and now we're going to make the lining, which is the lining pieces are two outers and one inner. Again, I've used the same fabric. So what you want to do is stitch at a quarter inch either end of those two side panels. And just curve it in slightly at one end. That just makes a sniper fit in the bottom of the basket. Which she would advise you to do in the pattern. Just remember which ends you've curved in slightly. Um, I'm going to quickly trace off the base stabiliser, the base pattern again, just onto the wrong side of this fabric, just so that I can cut it out. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to cut it straight out with the rotary cutter. Just 
just take those ends off. And then we're going to create the lining and then I will show you how I do the binding on it, which is different to the way that the pattern tells you to. So that is that. Let's just mark on there. There's a pen that I can actually see on here. It's going to mark the side sections, just to line up with the side seams. Um, so I've cut that side blazer out and I've just put a little marker on each end because again we're going to do the same as what we did with the outer and I'm going to put good sides together, clip it the whole way around and just line up those side seams. I'll tell you what actually, I'm going to use pins for this with my pin cushion that is a really handy must have if you want one of these. Um, there are there's one left on my store or you can go to Marie Scrappy Creations and look through her videos for the wrist pincushion tutorial. It's super, super easy to make and it is one of the most useful things that you'll ever need. So I'm just going to pin each end. What is wrong with me today? Why is everything I'm using the same colour as the fabric? Um, so I'm just going to pin these round. Um, and around, oh, I don't know what I'm actually going to, I'm going to just pin the ends and then I'm going to eyeball it the whole way around because if I put too many pins in I just get stabbed by them and that's the way that is. I could see the cats trying to climb into the basket even if they wouldn't fit. Yeah, cats have a habit of doing that. They seem to get into everything. Cats are a bit like toddlers in a way, aren't they? That you can buy them like the most expensive toy on the market for Christmas that year. And they're much, much happier playing with the box. Than they are the however many hundreds of pounds or dollars of thing that was that went into them that was in the box. So it's gonna... Why is that so much smaller, I wonder? Oh, that's no, fine. Right, let's get that over there. Let's move that pin out of the way. My finger, it's never a good thing. Go all the way around. So that is the bottom in the lining, and then all you want to do is put this into your basket, like so. Match up your side seams. Uh, let's go for a tulip pin because they're bigger and I'm like more likely to actually see it. So Marie, if you was wondering, when we were talking the other day, if you're still here, then that's great. If you're not and you watch it on the replay, then that's great. If you don't, I'll just talk to myself, which is absolutely fine. Um, when I was saying about the tulip pins, this is the tulip pins. They have tiny little unicorn heads on them. And they are just the cutest quilting pin ever. They come in a little um, a little thing like this, and they're really, really reasonably priced. So I enable anyone that wants them to go and get some because they're not expensive, and they just cheer you up. Right, so I've pinned those two ends in place. What I'm going to do now is just grab my binding strip, um, which I like to do the binding for this the same way as by any patterns, which is just to basically attach the lining into the outer with the binding to just sandwich the two together. There's a lot of trying and error to make it fit properly. Oh, it is all about that. It's, it's weird trying to work out the circumference length versus the actual sides panel lengths. 
Do I have a unicorn poop line? I don't, unfortunately. I'm sure it's something I'll probably end up with at some point. Because let's be fair, who, who's in? Oh, where's my scissors? Uh, they are hidden in my running with scissors. Um, so what I'm going to do is just cut the end off, cut the selvage off of there. And I'm going to fold that back for a half an inch. And what I'm going to do is somewhere, let's go near a side seam so it's not so obvious. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my binding, as you can see, I'm going to line that up with the edge of the lining and the edge of the outer. And then I'm just going to pin, I'm going to clip it the whole way around. Clip it, not pin it. Um, and then what we're going to do is stitch the binding, the lining and the outer all together at quarter of an inch. And then we'll put the binding back and top stitch it. And that is the bag, the basket done, basically. So as I said, once you've got all of the flying geese and everything done on this, it's actually quite quick. And it's a fun make because the flying geese are really fun to make. And I, I don't know about you lot, but I do quite like quilting with small pieces. So I'm just going to go all the way around. I'm going to take my unicorn out now because I don't need it holding that. Pop my clips in the whole way around. The reason why I've done this in purple is because this is going to be one of my entries for the So Purple to End ALZ challenge that Michelle from Michelle Sews again is um, running this month. So I immediately thought since I'm doing a tutorial, and this is the one day off this month that she's not doing a um, collaboration um, vlog, I thought, well, I'll do something purple on the one day off that she's not sewing. So that is the binding, the lining, and the outer clipped all the way around. I am just going to cut off the excess half an inch overhang from the beginning and clip that in so that is the binding is attached to the outer and the lining and what I like to do is as I say at the beginning I fold back half an inch and then what I do so that's my half an inch fold back so it's the end of that is all finished and then what I do then is just overlap so that when it gets folded over, the finished edge will then cover the inside bit. So what we're gonna do now is just stitch that the whole way around, that quarter of an inch. This is where my bobbin runs out again, you wait and see. I don't get on with bobbins very well. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship. They seem to hate me, and I don't really seem to hate them much. So this foam is actually really easy to sew through. So if you're worrying about needing to have a heavy jute machine, you need to worry. I can make this on my Benina, and I normally would, but because of it being on a live, as I say, the needle, the thread cutter is so much quicker on this. It means that I can stitch through the whole lot much quicker. Oh, that nearly ended up in my tea. How many people have thrown their um, clips in their tea or coffee? Probably quite a few, I imagine. Right, so that's that all sewn together. Some of these threads, there's hundreds of them. Um, so that is the basket. So what I've done now is I've attached the binding, the lining, and the outer basket all together in one go. This makes it easier than having to do it the way that they say to in the pattern. Um, and then what I'm going to do is flip my binding up and over the whole way around. Like so. You 
can clip it in place if you wish to. I wouldn't normally, I would just pull it around with a stiletto or a purple thing as I'm going. But just because I'm doing it as a tutorial, I'll do it as you're supposed to. I'm going to clip that the whole way around. This fabric I got from someone on a D-slash. I bought a load of it because it was reduced to something like three pounds a metre. Um, and it's a, I believe it's a Bernatex, Bern, Bernatex, or whatever it's called. Ben, Benatex um, fabric. And it's really, really nice quality cotton. Um, what's that? It's like this looks on. Oh, I really like this one. I'm really glad that I chose these colours because this is actually going to a friend of mine in the post after I finished it. And then we'll just try it. Let's check that out. So that is clipped on the whole way round. So that is the binding clipped down. Just double check that no one's. Uh, what I'm going to do for this, because just to make it easier, is I'm going to fold it inside out so that the um, inside of the fabric is laying flat on the bed of the machine. So as you can see, that is the lining all in. So what I'm going to do now is just top stitch down all of that binding. Where shall I start? I'll have to start in there. So let's top stitch that down, just make sure it's all tucked in nice and neat. What I would normally use is one of the um, little stick things. One of these, if you've got any of these. Ah, oh, thanks Stephanie. If you've got one of these, you can use it like a stiletto and you can literally just push your binding over and push it in towards, like that. <laughs> you can push it in towards the um, needle. Like a little walking foot almost. And it just keeps it all nice. Even and wrinkle free. much easier if I had my Tudor Pink stiletto that's supposed to be arriving but the um, the company that I ordered it from haven't actually done anything with it for five days. I got a notification yesterday to say that it's been posted but I ordered it five days ago so I don't know why it's taken them five days to um, put one item of hardware in the post. <laughs> How it takes five days to dispatch one single item, I'll never know. But anywho, I won't name and shame because they are a very big company and I expected more of them, but anyway. And it's the first time I've ordered from them, so it doesn't fill me with confidence about ordering them from them in the future. But needs must. They were the only person that had a Tudor Pink Stiletto in the whole of the UK that was in stock. And it's a crazy world that we live in when the Tudor Pink Stilettos are actually cheaper in the UK than a Bionic Stiletto. Right, let's take that off, let's cut this thread. And that is, so that is the binding all stitched down, which once turned out, let me spin this all around now, and line it all up properly. 
So that is there we go. The finished flying goose pouch. I mean, you could be a little bit more um, even than me and actually get the seams lined up on the side. As you can see, this is where I didn't line up the side. Hi, Christine. Say hello to Martin for me. Give him a good stroke and a cuddle. Um, so that is the way that I like to do the binding because it means that you don't have to turn the whole thing through the lining like it tells you to in the pattern. Um, this is also the way that it tells you to do it in one of the other types of um, baskets, which I will show you because they are, there's one up here, which is full of mm, that way. It's full of, um, it's full of other bags, but this is actually going to my mum because she's asked for some to store all of her hair products in. Um, so this is another Minky Kim pattern. Um, and this is the big baskets, which as you can see, is almost the size of my head and it would be actually quite nice as a hat. Um, but this is one of the other patterns that she does. Um, this is made from Tudor scraps um, and it crisscrosses at the bottom, which is really cool. Um, so this, the way that I've done the binding on today's basket is the way that she recommends to do the binding on this basket. So they are different shapes. These are much, much bigger. These ones are actually a really, really good size. Um, let me see if I can lower you down. These, I think, would be a really, really good size for Calax units because I've got a funny feeling they would fit in there really nicely. So if you want homemade Calax tubs, these ones are really, really handy. Um, which I did, I am debating whether to, um, I am debating whether to, you see down here, I've got these horrible storage tubs down here, which I don't particularly like. I'm debating whether to make a load of Tudor ones of these for myself to keep all of my elastics and zips and stuff in which will go down into there. Um, so yeah, this is off to my friend Michelle. And I will try and get that in the post today. Um, and I would just like to say thanks to everyone for watching. Um, if you do decide to download the pattern and you do want to make any of the baskets, then this will be uploaded to YouTube forever. Um, so you can always go back and watch it if you get stuck on any of it. But I will um, bid you all farewell and I'll see you all soon. I will be back on Friday for a Friday Sews. Um, and yeah, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching and seeing in, guys. I'll speak to you all soon. Let me just double check that I haven't missed anything. Nope, I think that's everything. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. See you later, Stephanie. Take care.